Welcome to our May Bay Area Housing Market Town Hall. We are going to go over quite a few things today. Um, as you know, that the biggest topic this past month was the Biden tax plan. So we want to know what kind of effect it might have in real estate. And then let's go back to basic Econ 101, the demand and supply. So that obviously has a lot um, to, to affect our housing market. So we will, we're going to look a little bit at the home construction, uh, number of sellers, which is the inventory, and number of buyers, the job data, and also the mortgage rate trends. Don't forget to like my video because we are putting all of our effort here to give you really, really valuable information. All right, so Biden tax plan. Uh, I know a lot of you guys, when you heard about the tax plan, especially if you're real estate investors, you probably get a little bit worried and nervous because he is proposing dropping this 1031 exchanges and then hiking this capital gain tax from 20% to 39.6%, especially for those who have a more than $1 million income. Um, and then also he had mentioned about ending step, step up spaces on the inherited property. So uh, as you can imagine, a lot of people are really uh, against these tax plans. Um, and the, the one of the common complaints is like, it seem, feels like these these tax plan is penalizing a lot of hardworking and enterprising Americans who have spent their lives saving and building equity in their properties. And I can sure, I personally, I definitely can feel that as well. So um, because we have so many, um, uh, so, so many talks about these tax hikes and people are really worried that um, the property market or housing market might crash. Uh, this is from Leona Edwards, uh, uh, who's a Tennessee-based CFP and wealth advisor and Marina Wealth Advisors. And she had said that, I don't, I don't expect the law to impact a lot of people, but selling in some markets could put someone over a million dollar in income for the year. What it means is that, especially for areas like ours here, um, if somebody had bought a property, let's say 30 years ago, and then now their property had uh, increased value and it had over a million dollar income, uh, uh, sorry, capital gain in value. So when this person sells it that year, he or she is going to earn over a million dollar. And that's when it's going to put, put them over that threshold and where they're going to get taxed quite a bit. So, uh, and that scares a lot of people. And also, especially those who used to maybe live in their property, and then they decide that, okay, you know, I'm, I moved away, moved to another uh, property, and then this one they want to keep as a rental property. If you have been doing that, and then uh, you, you are keeping it as a rental property, and you miss that capital exemption, gain exemption as a property owner, which means that if you, the, by the time you sell this property, you look back five years, if within this five years, there are two years that you're living in this property, you can still enjoy that um, $250,000 capital gain tax exemption as a single uh, by homeowner or a married couple will be up to 500,000 capital gain exemption. So technically you can rent it up for three years and you can still get that exemption. But now if you have gone over that, you've decided to sell in six years, then you might be you know, subject to this capital gain tax. So you have to be careful uh, and think about if you want to keep this longer term or not. All right, so that's the tax plan effect. What about the supply, housing supply? Now, of course, we talk a lot about home construction. So now in terms of home construction, of course, we have to understand that we need to look at the population. So the uh, US population, as you can see, has been going up right, um, all these years. But then if you look at the construction and around year 2006 to 2009, look at that sharp drop mm -hmm. in 2009. It's crazy. I mean, mm -hmm. how is it possible we have more people in this country, but we are not building more homes? It doesn't make sense at all. And especially if you look at and around the same period of time, or actually the last decade, 2010 to 2020, it had gone up 6% in the population. So if you really look at by decades, this is actually by Spencer Raskov. He, he was the former Zillow, uh, Zillow Group CEO. And he looked at the number of construction for single family. The last decade, we had constructed half of what we used to construct in the previous decade. And you know it's really mind boggling 
how, you know, and when, especially when we are talking about, oh, is there a bubble? Is there a bubble? If we don't have enough supply, we don't have enough housing, there's a shortage. Obviously, people are going to pay more for it, right? So why is it that we are not building more? So one of the things that you can look at is the lumber cost. So the lumber cost, uh, it, it was going down from 2004 to 2008. That's why you saw that there was a hike earlier with the new construction. But then since then, you see that it has gone up and that era is getting more and more steeper. And look at that in the last, uh, just honestly, just like last year, has gone up 300% in just the last year. And then this has caused a lot of uh, uh, pressure on developer. As a matter of fact, the cost for them to develop has gone up so much that some of them might as well just abandon their projects and not to build anymore. So that's why National Association of Home Builders, they are constantly talking about this. And they have said that, you know, lumber prices skyrocketed more than 300% since last spring, causing the average price of a new single family home to increase by nearly $36,000. And similarly, the average price of a new multifamily home has increased by nearly $13,000 over the same period. And Realtor Magazine also have said that builders are reporting that increases in material costs notably on lumber are continuing to challenge growth in new home construction. So this is one of the reasons why we are seeing prices, home prices have been going up throughout the whole country. All right, so that's one, uh, one uh, reason regarding the supply. Now there's another uh, supply is that, okay, existing sellers or uh, homeowners, are they going to sell their home? And um, from Zillow, they have done this um, uh, questionnaire survey with about 100 respondents. And the question is that, when will US housing inventory grow again? From those 100 respondents, most of them have said that, believe, believe that second half of 2021 is when the inventory is going to go up. So this is just what the people think that second half of 2021. And as a matter of fact, we have been talking to our clients as well that we are expecting probably inventory is going to go up a bit um, uh, in, during the second half of the 2021. Now, why is that? Vaccinations, right? We are getting, people are getting vaccinated. Sellers who are really afraid or more worried about this COVID at the time, even though we have a lot of protocol now, we don't allow open houses. We make sure that, you know, we have all these posts at the door saying that you have to wear your mask, you have to wear your shoe covers, and you, we provide hand sanitizer and also um, um, the wipes. But really a lot of sellers are still really worried about letting people to come into their houses. Houses. So now that more and more people are being vaccinated, we believe that more people are gonna be, uh, or more homeowners are, will be more um, comfortable showing, letting people to come in and show the property. And this is exactly what also Ali Wolf, she's the chief economist for Zonda has said the same thing. And um, she said that others will want to wait until the vaccines are widely distributed. And this suggests more inventory will be for sale in late 2021 into the spring selling season in 2020, uh, 2022. Okay, so supply seems to be going up slightly. What about demand? Now, I, this is specifically talking about the summer for, uh, for this year. Same thing because of the vaccinations. I'm sure a lot of you are planning on traveling, if, especially if you have kids. It's like kids are gonna be out soon. And you know, this year, finally, you've been cooped up inside the house for last year, a year and a half. My kids just started going back to school as well. And uh, we are, my husband and I were almost there. Next week, we'll be getting our second, sh second shot right away we've been talking about like where should we go where should we go you know during the summer and this is not just us it's a lot of people every week I hear somebody is in Hawaii right now um, so we definitely have seen a hike, uh, a hike in terms of the travelers um, traveling throughout the country domestically and also internationally so because of that reason um, last year we have this really high demand because there's nothing else to do but just stay home, looking at the screen, looking at the inventory. And when you look at beautiful homes, of course, you really want to move, right? So, but this year, we think that during the summer, we probably have less buyers. So if you are a buyer, 
um, you are really getting frustrated of the market. I, I would say that, you know what, I think the market is going to get a little bit better. Um, the summertime, if you're not traveling, maybe this would be a really good time for you to try to find a home this summer because we might see more inventory and also uh, we might have less competition. And also here is that another thing is that, did you guys know because of this pandemic, households have $1.5 trillion in excess savings and it may rise to $2.4 trillion by mid-year. 20% potentially spent in the first reopening year, which is 2021. So uh, a lot of people are really using their money to spend, uh, could be on even home remodeling, how many people have been doing remodeling projects during this year, right? And then um, some, some people have uh, really saved up quite a bit of money and starting to look at uh, potentially buying homes. So uh, uh, even, if, even if it's not homes, they're really trying to spend the money now or feel, feel that they can spend the money. So this goes to the job market. The job market right now, if you have gotten, um, you heard just this past April, um, the expected job, job increase was about 1 million jobs, but it came out on the job market reports is that only added 266,000 jobs, way below, way below uh, their, their expectation. And employment had, um, uh, they were expecting 5.8%, but it stayed at 6.1%. And uh, the average hourly wages had, um, they expected to come down 0.4%, but actually have gone up 0.3%. And this is also, um, I was listening to Constance Hunter, she's the KPMG chief economist. And she basically tried, uh, she, she was commenting regarding this big discrepancy in terms of the expectation and also the actual job reports. So if you look at the job postings on Indeed, the job postings actually gone up quite significantly. And, but then the thing is, if it has gone up so much, how come we didn't have as big of an increase in terms of the uh, jobs is only 266,000. There were quite a few different explanations. It could be because, you know, some of the kids are still home. They, uh, for example, my children, they are still, they're not really going to school full-time, full-time, not five days a week, just, uh, just part-time. Um, so we still have to be at home, uh, maybe because of retirement, or maybe they're still afraid of the virus, or um, now become their so skills, skills gap, or one of the very interesting is, uh, interesting is, is the unemployment benefits that is actually discouraging people to go back to work. Because if they go back to work, they actually may not be getting as much unemployment benefit. So that, that was also could be one of the reasons why, uh, even though there are a lot of companies looking for jobs, but they just cannot, um, cannot hire people. And uh, if you guys want to read more about it, Ali Wolf, uh, she's the chief economist from Zona Home, and she has um, quite a few reports about this and talk a lot about like the why is it that we have such a great job market, but at the same time, we are not, um, a lot of people are not being hired. And then as you can see, the Wall Street Journal also said that it's because of, um, you know, companies are ready, they're ready to hire, but they cannot hire. Um, so this is, this is really an indication seeing that the job market is doing well, but it's just that um, the people are not ready to go back to work yet. So that when job market is doing well, that actually will aff affect the commercial real estate market as well. So National Association of Realtors, economic experts predict a bright path for CRE, the commercial real estate. And Lawrence Yoon, who is the chief economist for National Association of Realtors, has said that economic expansion and the jobs recovery will lead to rises in occupancy across all commercial real estate property types. Just from my personal experience, I see that as well. Um, we had office buildings been, you know, we had it for a while, a listing for a while, but nobody was asking about it. And then all of a sudden in April, boom, all these people came out and then started inquiring about the office building. It's been there, but before people didn't have that confidence, but now um, uh, a lot more companies are out looking for leasing, uh, leasing a space and also looking to purchase. So we, we definitely, from the commercial real estate side, we definitely have seen a lot more activities. And then you could tell that people are a lot more positive about this economy. And here we go. What about the loan situation, the mortgage rates? 
So and on May 6, uh, through money.com, uh, they had reported the current mortgage rate stick below 3% for third week. And that was May 6. And the trends was that the 30 years mortgage, as you see, that it actually has come down. Um, we had a little spike, but that it came down to 2.96. So it actually looked pretty good. But May 12, which was today, and they came out is that the average 30 year rate jumps about 3.3%. Uh, so six days later, no more under 3% now is at 3.3%. So, um, you know, things can change quite fast. So it's, it's saying that here, um, looking ahead, experts believe interest rates will rise more in 2021, but modestly. And while mortgage rates are likely to rise this year, experts say the increase won't happen overnight and it won't be a dramatic jump. Rates should stay near historically low levels through the first half of the year, rising slightly later in the year. Even with the rising rates, it will still be a favorable favorable time to finance a new home or refinance. And this is this is also we all know that the housing market has been fueled by these low interest rates, and that's why we have um, so many people out. The demand is high, and even though the rate has gone up to three point three, and honestly, in twenty nineteen it was at four percent, so three point three is still a really really good rate. So we've been sharing this chart with you guys. This is from last month and I kept it here. Um, and this is a March mortgage rates projections. As you see that Fannie Mae and the Mortgage Banking uh, a Bankers Association, they have increased their projections. 2021 2Q, as we just saw, it says 2.96%. And their projections here, when the average all four or uh, four agencies is at 3.05. So it's pretty close to that 2.96% uh, 30 years fixed. But let's take a look at now um, more adjustments being made. Now, every single agencies are changing their um, uh, their mortgage rate projections and they all had increased their projections um, by about 20 basis point uh, across the board and um, we have new projections to 2022 2q but I know it sounds a little bit scary it's like oh my gosh they're increasing the rate but Honestly, is you, they're not really increasing that much. We are still talking about in the threes. Um, and then not until 2022, the average is still about 3.67. So it's still lower than what 2019, uh, what, they, what we had in 2019. So yes, it is going up, but still, yes, historically pretty darn low uh, in uh, mortgage rates. Please do remember to subscribe to my channel so that you'll get notified whenever we have new housing market updates for you. So let's conclude what we just talked about. Um, now, Biden tax plan. So we're probably going to expect more investors want to sell because they want to avoid those hefty capital gain tax. Um, and also, they're afraid that the 1031 exchange might, um, uh, they, they might not do that anymore. Although a lot of people don't think that's going to pass. Um, and there's a supply. Uh, again, slow in home construction. So it was, we're still going to have some limit in the home uh, uh, the supply, the inventory, but then at the same time for the existing homes, more sellers going to feel more comfortable to list because of the vaccinations. Um, and but I do think that it's not going to be as much as you know home construction. They will build so many at a time. Uh, even though we have more sellers coming out to sell, doesn't mean that we can catch up with the demand. Now demand in the summer is probably going to come down a little bit. And the mortgage rate is going to increase steadily, so uh, we're probably going to still see uh, slightly uh, less demand in the summer. So again, a reminder for buyers who want to look for property or who have been looking for properties, please don't give up yet. You still have your summer. Take, a, take this opportunity. I think you might have the chance here. Um, and the economy, we're doing well. Job market improved. Um, more money are saved um, and also the commercial real estate, we are showing really bright future. We see occupancy increase, so it's a good sign. And lastly, let's go over a little bit of the local markets and what's going on. Have you subscribed to my channel yet? Please stay tuned and also like my video. Please make some comments. If you have any other topics you would like me to share, do let me know. Um, Santa Clara County housing stats here. I uh, just want to show you guys, we have again um, increased and in, uh, about 37% on closed sales compared to last month. 
every month we've been saying like last month we said like we increased by 51 percent and now this month i thought maybe we will increase by that much we increased by another 37 percent and the price had gone up to 1.65 uh, for the median price in santa clara county and still increased by about three percent and um, as compared to last month, but it's about 18.8% compared to one year ago. And the state days on the market, 12 days, very, very low. It's only 12 days on the market. On the other hand, condo and townhomes, it has gone up as well, 27% since last month and 171% since one year ago to 570 uh, sales. And median price gone up as well by 1.5% from last month to 888,500. And uh, days on the market as well is only 18 days now. Um, and this is really tremendous because we've been really worried about the condo market for a while uh, last year. And uh, now we definitely see that condo market and town market, they are definitely moving pretty well. How about San Mateo County? San Mateo County, same thing, gone up to, to $2 million um, uh, for single family. And then days on the market went down three days to 17 days only on the market but we have actually more close sales. Just because we have more close sales doesn't mean the price came down. It's actually, we have, this is showing how much demand we have right now. As for the condos, it has gone up also to $957,000. So only 22 days, eight days less than last month. And we have 151 increased by 16% sales compared to last month. And East Bay, East Bay is still going up. There are also more sales uh, have been sold, but doesn't mean the price has come down. Price as well for all areas in East Bay has gone up quite tremendously. Just by looking at this chart, I'm not gonna go over everything, double digits all over throughout the whole East Bay. So this is one of the reasons why we are here to um, to, to invite Karen, you know, to talk about what is going on. Because if you look at how, uh, these are, again, some of the offers that we have made uh, for, for, for my team. And you can see that all of them pretty much have multiple offers. All of them, no matter if it's Daly City, Foster City, especially look at this, asking two point, right under $2.2 .2 million. They got 31 offers and they went over $3 million. How are you going to appraise this? I don't know. I mean, Karen, if you see something like this, how are you going to appraise this? And how how are you how are you as the realtor um, going to advise your clients or as a as the buyer? How are you going to decide what kind of price should you be offering? And we, we are going to go into that a little bit more. Um, but you know, as we see Saratoga, same thing. Even though we are these higher price point area we still see Saratoga two point, uh, right under $2.9 million asking and sold to cash offer of over $3.5 million. That's $600,000 over. Um, and um, so Cupertino, Santa Clara, San Jose, these are all areas that has gone way above and beyond um, what the asking price is. So um, uh, here, I don't want to delay any further. I really, I get really curious. I want to introduce you guys to Karen Mann, who is this, who is a certified general appraiser at Mann and Associates. 